All right, everybody, Paul Stetsowitz here with Weeks Aircraft doing a mechanics corner update on the BF-108. Uh, it's actually been a while since we actually were in the shop here uh, doing a quick update. We've been on the road a lot, uh, dropping off all kinds of different things to different vendors uh, to get done. Um, but we are making some uh, steady progress, but we also are having some issues and some problems along the way. So uh, we're going to talk about a few things. So first thing we're going to discuss is the progress on the wings. So let's go check that out. All right, the first thing we're going to discuss is the progress on the left wing. Uh, I think the last time that we did a update, uh, the wing was in the fixture stand that we talked about, but we hadn't actually disassembled anything yet. And since then, we've removed almost all the skins off the bottom of the wing. And what we found is uh, a few issues. Uh, one, uh, it's a good thing we're actually opening up the wing because we're actually finding uh, that the wings are fairly untidy inside. And what I mean by that is that like almost all the paint is flaking off inside. Um, there is corrosion inside, but all surface corrosion, nothing too serious. Uh, a good example of that is one of the one of the skins that came off. We're finding a lot of uh, it's like white powdery spots on some of the skins and a few areas internally. All that can be cleaned up really easy. But it's a good thing we're finding this out because uh, you wouldn't know this unless you completely drill the skins off. So we're finding corrosion uh, between lap joints and stuff. So. That's one good thing um, that we're discovering and we're going to be able to take care of. Um, the plan was, of course, to remove uh, the skins, to go in here and clean this out. Um, but before I went any further with this, I wanted to make sure I had proper rivets to reassemble everything. And after doing some research, of course, we found out that they're 120 degree metric rivets. Uh, I found a supplier for rivets and I ordered those rivets. And I thought I ordered what I needed. But then as I started drilling off some skins, I found some things that were going to slow us down. Uh, one of them being that there's half sizes. I thought everything was three, four, or five millimeters. I'm finding three and a halfs, four and a halfs. And also I'm finding that a lot of the rivets, especially that go through the spar, uh, were four millimeter, but they had a bigger head on it. And the rivets that I ended up ordering from the company actually had a smaller head. And so I thought, well, that's kind of an interesting thing as they probably did that for a reason so then I had to go back to the rivet company and discuss about having proper rivets made with a bigger head they were able to do this but of course this is taking between eight to ten weeks to get rivets uh, so that's kind of slowed that thing down also another thing we're trying to find is dimple dies for 120 degree metric rivets so I'm running into a lot of obstacles here I've actually found a company that sells dimple dies for the British 120 degrees, which are uh, fractional sizes, um, I'm getting those. So that's going to help us, but I'm still trying to work with a couple companies to help actually have uh, metric dimple dies made. So that has slowed things down uh, quite a bit. And because of that, like I said, I don't want to go any further because I want to make sure I have what I need to put it back together again. Other issues we found inside of the wing, uh, actually we've taken the, all the electrical wiring and everything out of the wing. One of the things we noticed that uh, the wiring was cut going to the pitot tube, the pitot tube mounts right here, and the wiring was cut. I thought that was kind of strange. After a closer look of the pitot tube that I have that we took out of the airplane, we discovered that that's not even the correct pitot tube. The original one must have got wiped out in the accident, the ground loop that it had, and it was replaced with the non-standard unit. So now we have to source that also. Uh, another thing that has to be done, the mounting bracket for the landing light. Um, this must have been damaged in the accident also. Uh, somebody made up a, a, a piece right here that's not correct, so that has to come off and be redone. And so, like most restorations, um, this has kind of slowed things down on, on the progress of the wings. This is just, it's turned into be a bit of a can of a worms issue, like that we dis uh, discussed before. Uh, but as soon as we get dies, dimple dies, rivets, uh, we'll get into this a little bit further. We'll get in here and clean out all this uh, old paint out of here, uh, corrosion treat everything, and then we'll start making some skins, and at that point we'll paint everything prime, and then we can start going back together again. Uh, so that is basically the progress on that. But since we haven't been able to do a whole lot on the wings, of course we have to switch gears and move on to other things. And other things that we've been doing, including the painting of a lot of parts, uh, the rack over here uh, actually has a lot of finished parts that came out that have been uh, cleaned, corrosion controlled, primed, and then put into the uh, proper um, gray color. Everything inside the wing, inside the fuselage, is this kind of uh, off gray color. It's pretty standard throughout the entire airplane. So a lot of pieces there uh, have been done. 
so that's making good progress also. And then we're also going to talk about uh, a few things on the other side that we've actually painted and finished. Uh, the wheel covers and also we're going to just talk about the, the wheels and brakes themselves that had to have some work done to them. All right, some other things that we have finished uh, and actually gone through primer and uh, paint are the seat track rails. Those are all finished, ready to go into the airplane. Uh, the wheel covers, uh, which were uh, quite the task with the new uh, placards that we talked about in one of the other episodes. Those are all finished, ready to go uh, onto the wheels when those are done. So that's coming along real nice. And a little bit of electrical work also. Uh, I had the rudder uh, somewhat apart, the bottom of the rudder, and the rudder actually has, of course, some wires that run to a light, and this all had to be redone. And I actually wanted to do one of these because I wanted to kind of see what's involved with the electrical system on the 108. So um, basically, um, a couple of different wires, black and red wire, uh, that run through uh, the rudder. This is the red wire, and you can see that I'm not quite sure what the insulation material was that they used, but it's almost kind of like a, like a, it's almost like a paper material actually. And of course, that's all rotted and broken, so all the wiring has to be replaced. And also, all the wiring was run through um, a shielding, and there's the old original shielding right there. And you can see it's it's worn out, it's frayed in different areas, uh, so that all has to be replaced. So basically, I just took all that apart, uh, found good thing. I said there's a company that actually makes aviation grade wire in black and red, and uh, took it all apart, uh, ran brand new wiring, uh, brand new shielding, uh, used the original little uh, clamps that hold everything on. Um, this material is just some really soft aluminum they used to keep all that together, so I was actually able to take that off and reuse it. Uh, run that back through there again. Uh, cleaned up the, the rudder light, which actually came out amazing. This is in really good condition. And so that's ready to go back into the airplane. Um, the red residual connections cleaned up and everything again, no soldered connections, everything goes into, the wire goes into a little area and a little tiny screw clamps it in place. Uh, so that's all finished. So one less thing to do, making progress there. And another thing we're dealing with is, <clears throat> of course, the wheels and tires. We have found one original tire that we want to put on the airplane. I'm still sourcing another one, um, but the wheels themselves need quite a bit of work. And this is actually one of the wheels, they're a magnesium wheel. These, of course, have been all cleaned up. Uh, the bearings taken out to be checked and inspected. And also, uh, the brake drum. This airplane has regular shoe brake like you see on an old car. Um, that had to be removed. It's riveted in, but after you remove the rivets, it still doesn't come out. You actually have to put the, uh, the wheel itself into the oven to about 300 degrees, get it nice and hot, and then that uh, piece pops right out of there. And, of course, when it comes out, the piece was was rusted. Uh, it's originally chrome plating inside, so the brake drum has something smooth uh, to adhere to. And so once that was out, this had to be cleaned up and sent to hard chrome. This is one of our little road trips that we took. Uh, got those back, so these pieces are ready to go back uh, into the wheel. Once those are installed, the wheel can be cleaned and painted uh, the correct color, in this case black, and then we can actually mount the new tire and tube, and we'll have that finished. So. Again, not working on the wings, but making progress on uh, some other small things. Also, another thing that we've uh, been taking care of is uh, plating, CAD plating for all the hardware that's uh, come out of the wing, and also the chrome plating um, that goes around the trim. And we're going to show you those pieces right now. All right, one of the things you have to take care of in a, a restoration of an aircraft is uh, all the hardware. And in a lot of cases, especially if we're working on an American type of aircraft, American design, Hardware normally isn't a big issue because basically you can just change that with brand new hardware. Even if that hardware is not the correct CAD color, um, you can actually send it off and get it uh, CAD to a clear CAD, which is more correct for uh, 1940s. Uh, but in the case of the 108, it's been a little bit tricky. Now, I thought I was actually going to be able to purchase a lot of new hardware for the airplane. But what I found out that a lot of the hardware that's in the aircraft is very specific to the airplane. And that new hardware that you purchase now, even metric hardware, aviation hardware, it looks different. And so I decided I'm going to try to, to reuse as much of the original hardware as possible. And that involves, of course, taking all the hardware out, which we've done, cleaning all the hardware, which is actually uh, takes quite a bit of time because all of it has to be uh, glass beaded to get all the rust off of it. And then it's sent off to the CAD plating shop. And most of the hardware has come out of the wing. You'll see it here on the table. 
And uh, one of the things that people wondered about when we were talking about the chrome plating also is that once it gets to the platers, the platers just dumps it into a big bucket and it's like, oh, how do you keep track of all that? Well, don't get alarmed because we actually have a good way of doing this uh, with a lot of the hardware. Uh, I've actually uh, have an inventory of it, a physical inventory of it, and also I take photographs of everything with, and next to the photograph and the pieces, I have labels that say where the hardware goes. That took like two days just to go through all that and photograph everything. So when it does come back to us, yes it is, it's all kind of mixed up, but we have the list, the inventory list we made, we have the photographs that we take, and we're able to go back through again and uh, know where everything goes. One of the things that uh, we got back are the wing attach fittings. Uh, these went through the NDT non-destructive testing, which was one of our little road trips that we took. They came back with no cracks at all, and then they were sent out for CAD plating, and then there you see it, nice clear CAD. Now, nowadays, uh, hardware is what they call a CAD II, or it's a gold color, but back in the 1940s and the 30s, uh, it was actually a clear CAD or silver CAD. What's interesting, though, is actually the, a lot of the German hardware that I've taken out of the airplane wasn't CAD plated at all. It wasn't plated in any shape or form. Uh, a lot of it was just painted, and that's how they protected the hardware. Well, nowadays, we can't really go back that way because we're trying to protect and preserve the airplane. Also, if I'm trying to use the original hardware, I have to clean the hardware to before I can paint it, so it's just better off at that point to have it plated also. So a lot of hardware, a lot of very specific little things um, that had to be done, but that's all come back. So that'll all go back into its bags that we've taken out so we know where it all goes back. Um, so always a lot of uh, plating to do. There's actually more that's gonna have to be done uh, from the fuselage, uh, but that's coming along very nice, and so we're happy with that. Another thing that we've done, of course, we mentioned in one of the road trips was the chrome plating. Now we sent this off and I was a little skeptical of how well it was going to come out. A lot of the pieces were pitted. Even the guy that ran the plating shop said, well, you know, these things are kind of rough. We're going to do the best we can. But I tell you what, this stuff came back and uh, it's impressive. Uh, there's some of it right there. Uh, these are the window pieces. Uh, as you can see, this is actually the front. Uh, bow piece that goes around the front of the windshield. Uh, another side piece, uh, this, right here this is on the side. This actually goes over and mounts on that part right there, just like that. And so these pieces just came out gorgeous. Here's another very large piece that goes onto the, onto the door to get in and out of the airplane. Uh, just flawless. I was just very, very impressed uh, with the quality of work that we got. Also, the small parts too, which I thought were going to be difficult. Um, there's actually little uh, triangular brackets that hold the seat belts in place on the seats. Those were all chrome plated. They came back very, very nice. And the hardware. This is the, one of the things that I, I think they were going to have a really hard time with because all this stuff is pretty small. A, a lot of it was corroded, and rusted, and pitted. Uh, but even all these came back. Uh, very, very nice, perfectly smooth. Um, so it's just, it's just going to be so cool to put all this back together again with the new Plexi, fresh paint, new chrome, and then the window blinds that we had made also are all going to be in there. So it's going to be cool to see all that go back together again. So very happy with the, with the chrome plating, very happy with the CAD plating. And so uh, next thing we'll talk about is uh, some of the interior work that we're doing. All right, one of the other things we're dealing with on the restoration of the 108, of course, is the interior. Uh, something that we no, don't normally have to deal with too much on an aircraft, but in the case of the 108, it has a full uh, leather interior, just like a, like a touring aircraft would. And we've had to take all that out. We've dropped it off to the upholstery guy, and I had the upholsterer actually, he, re he removed all the old leather from these components because I wanted to, him to know how it goes on and off. And then I collected those pieces come back to here and we're finding that we have to do a lot of repair work and again during a restoration a lot of times you find yourself doing things that you didn't think you were going to do at all and one of the things I'm finding out is I'm doing woodwork I didn't think I was going to have to do any of that and uh, one of the things was the pilot and co-pilot uh, bottom bucket seat pieces that are a, a wood frame the leather is attached to it but the wood frames themselves were in very poor condition and had to be completely taken apart and glued back together again some new wood constructed and put back again those have been finished they're off back at the poster so he can actually finish those pieces. But the airplane also has uh, side panels that line inside the aircraft. Those are, again, all wood. And this is actually one of the pieces. This is the left side 
uh, rear piece that goes uh, back in the uh, rear of the airplane. It has a little pocket here, uh, and that's actually what one of these is. This is a little uh, piece that goes in there. And there's actually a little uh, elastic pocket that there's, you can put maps and stuff in. Um, but these are all the original pieces. There's six of them. Uh, and I thought possibly that we were going to have to remake some of these because I thought they were going to be in very poor condition. But what we're finding is that they're not too bad at all. Uh, they have some minor problems, like this one here has a little bit of a crack, and there's another crack. Uh, someone actually did an old repair right here. And what we're finding is we're able to fix all this. We're just doing some small repairs uh, to the few areas, uh, gluing all that up with some good quality glue, because of course the glues back then they had were not very good, so we're finding all the original glue joints are just falling apart. And then basically just sanding out the piece, giving it some nice uh, new varnish to seal it up. And then of course that'll go back to the uh, upholstery. Good example of a finished piece is the uh, panel that goes on the uh, pilot's left hand side. That's the finished piece right there. Again, you'll see some repairs that we've made here where it was actually broken completely through there. And there was a little crack right there. Now of course we could have remade this, but these are these are pretty involved pieces. If you look at the back side, is they have these little reinforcements that are all glued in here. Um, and also, if you look at them, they're actually built to the conform to the shape of the airplane. So these would be hard to make because I think originally they were made in a mold where when they came out of the mold after they were glued together, they held this shape. So if you made them new and you made them flat and then you covered them with the leather, as soon as you put them in the airplane and tighten it all down, they would bend it. And then the leather, the leather would have a bunch of wrinkles in it. So they made these to conform to the shape of the airplane. So we're finding that it's better just to save the original pieces. So uh, these are coming out really nice. There's a couple other pieces that have uh, somebody cut a hole in a few of them that have to do some patches too, but uh, very happy with being able to use uh, the original pieces. Uh, another thing is the pilot and co-pilot uh, seat frames themselves. This is one of them right here. Uh, it's a combination of uh, an aluminum casting and some aluminum tubing. And that piece itself is generally in good condition. They've been stripped of all their paint. Um, no major issues there. Um, but the back of the seat uh, had a skin on it. And this, of course, was all upholstered with leather. And the back of the seat was this. This is actually magnesium. Again, the, with the magnesium in the airplane, we're finding. We thought maybe we could repair it, but a lot of corrosion. We started starting to clean it up and a bunch of corrosion, little pinholes all over it. So that had to come off. Uh, a new piece being made. Rick is working on that. That's actually one of the pieces right there. Uh, we're just going back aluminum with this because it's just better off instead of trying to find magnesium. And the aluminum is just going to hold better over time. So once those are done, they'll get painted, reattached to the frame. Seats will be dropped off at the upholster so that he can continue uh, on those pieces. So that again is the whole goal is to keep the uh, upholster busy. Uh, and another thing that has to be done is the rear seat. The rear seat, very similar to the two front seats, also a wooden frame. Uh, this actually is in better shape than I thought. These pieces have to come out and re-glued. Re re um, this wooden piece right here is broken, so this will have to all come off again. The good thing is, again, all the glues they used back then were not the best of quality, and I'm finding that I can actually pop all these glue joints pretty easily without breaking anything, and then make a new piece and glue it back on again and then that's going to be finished. So making good progress on that. We're going to get all, the goal is to get all the upholstered pieces back to the upholsterer so he can continue, because I think it's going to take him quite a while to uh, do all these components. Uh, another thing we've finished, uh, the control services, uh, elevators, ailerons, and the rudder are basically finished, uh, ready for cover. They're uh, in their final paint, and so we're real happy with that. So making progress, and like I said, uh, shifting kind of gears uh, off of the wings onto some things with the fuselage and the interior. But like I said, that's how restorations go. You get to a point where you can't do one project, you have to move on to another. And in this case, it has been basically the interior that we've been trying to uh, deal with and of course all the little road trips we've made. So hope you enjoyed the update. Come back and check out more progress on the 108. And hopefully in the next six months or so, we're gonna start making a little bit more progress on the wings.